Hi everyone, uh, today we'll be looking at batch norm 2D. We have seen batch norm 1D. Uh, this is very important for convolutional neural networks. Uh, what really happens is for, uh, for CNN with many layers, we end up having an issue of internal covariance shift, where during training the distribution from one layer to another, the distribution changes. And that is problematic because it can make it very difficult for the network to converge. That is why batch norm 2D, batch normalization was introduced, which means uh, across data point in the batches, uh, the statistics is calculated so that we have a consistency in the distribution between layers. All right, so let's see what it is. Uh, in case you, it's not clear what I said, uh, let's make it concrete. So you typically have a, oh, by the way, these dots are really tensors. So this one could be maybe 0.1. And the typical dimension of inconvol CNN, the, it's usually a 4D tensor. So we can have something like this 2 by 3 by 2 by 2. Uh, two here means two, usually two the, from the left is the bus size. So it means we have two images. Uh, two images. And each image has three channels. Each image has three channels. Okay. And each channel is two by two height of two and the uh, width of two so what does this really mean a channel can be usually we know a typical image has three channels rgb so three channels could be let's say uh, yeah for this image this is the red channel for this image is the red channel let's call this r1 r2 green for this first image we have g1 G2, uh, green channel, green channel. The uh, first image also, B1, uh, blue channel, blue channel. Let's call this B1 and B2. All right, so really, uh, typically, this is the way it looks. An image is this is the red channel. For this, this is the red channel, R1, R2. And then the green channel, and then the blue channel. Uh, this is, I hope it is clear. All right, so this is R1, R2. So I think having a sense, having a sense of the way your data looks is very important especially when you start having problems and you want to debug your code um, understanding the dimension is crucial so this is the channel height and width and there's also a separate number epsilon which we are going to use later on it's a very small number uh, it could be smaller than this. All right, so let's start the normalization. Well, from the name, batch norm. So data points will be across batches. Statistics will be calculated across batches. So let's pull in R1 and R2. Well, really R1 and R2. R R1 could be something like this 0.1. Maybe a tensor, a tensor, a tensor. R2 could be something like this. A tensor, a tensor, a tensor, and maybe 1.6. We group them. We group them because we are computing mean and the variance across both of them. All right, so let's compute our, uh, our mean, which is really we we sum all of these eight numbers and divide by eight 
so let's say 6.8 after we sum them we got we we got 6.8 and then let's compute the variance but how do you compute variance uh, we take a value 0.1 subtract the mean squared plus the next value subtract the mean squared all the way to uh, 1.6 minus 0.9 squared and we divide by it this is the variance this is the typical mean and variance calculation that we know so now let's normalize the value so let's normalize 0.1 how do you do that we take 0.1 by the way i'm using a red pen here because we are uh, in the red channel 0.1 minus 0.9 the mean divide by the square root of the this open four. So the when you do this, we get open four. For example, open four. The variance plus epsilon. Why do we put epsilon here? Really, just to uh, to avoid division by zero. So when we do it, we get, for example, one, minus 1.2. So 0 0.1 has been normalized to minus 1.2. And we do this for all the eight numbers. Later on, we'll end up with uh, something like this. Minus 1.2, a tensor, a tensor. All the way here. So... This actually has a dimension of 2 by 1 by 2 by 2. 2 is the batch and 1 we are only in the red channel. So 1 channel and each channel is 2 by 2. And also usually whatever uh, in this is also 2 by 1 by 2 by 2. So usually whatever goes into the normalization dimension, its dimension uh, does not change. All right, so let's go to the green channel. Let's pull in the G1 and G2. G1, G2. All right, so G1 can be 0.5. And then G2, the tensor here, and maybe 2 plus 0. We'll group it. This is also 2 by 1 by 2 by 2. So uh, the green channel mean, just as we uh, did here, sum the values, divide by 8. And then the green channel variance, 0.4, for example. By the way, there's going to be a, a Jupyter notebook related to this in the description. All right, so let's normalize 0.5. We take 0.5, subtract 1.3, the mean, uh, variance plus epsilon, maybe 1 minus 1.4. Uh, uh, so 0.5 has been normalized to minus 1.4. We do this 8 times for all the other 8 values. All right, we can write minus 1.4. Again, this is 2 by 1 by 2 by 2. And this has the same dimension. Uh, we, we go to the blue uh, channel. We pull in B1 and B2. Uh, no, well, we have a problem here. <laughs> Anyway, so we compute B, B mean, B variance, and this could be 1.7, and maybe 0. Point, I don't know, maybe 5. 
so after we normalize the values here we end up with the just as we saw for the red and the green channel we have the new b1 and b2 normalized versions all right so after we are done after we are done with this we have to go back to the original dimension of 2 by 3 by 2 by 2 so we take in b1 g1 and uh, g1 and b1 we put them together because they belong to the first data point we take in uh, the normalized version of R, r2 g2 and b2 we concatenate them because they belong to the second data point let's see after you do that you end up with your your own your final tensor which of course will have the same dimension as the original two three two two all right i'm going to call this o one output one so the final output because we are not done the final output will be o point one sorry <laughs> not o point one o one output one times gamma plus beta these are trainable parameters means that they are updated using gradient descent depending on the algorithm you use uh, they are for scaling and shifting so when you normalize you end up with unit variance however while that is good uh, having a data with distribution of unit variance can uh, constrain the network and make it make it difficult to learn complex transform transformations so when you do this you get a new tensor f final output which really has the same dimension as the output one and that is all and then you uh, continue with the after you normalize you continue with other layers you input this into the second layer of the convolution yep uh, I hope that is very clear uh, please if there's any uh, concern let me know in the comments thank you very much